Even the LMS is ancient, which are known to be more lazy, underhanded in the tactics they use to complete their workload and contracts, were very busy and worked off their wheels. One morning, James threatened she came to shunt some trucks in the yard with me. He was just finishing arranging one of his trains that was due to barrel and furnace when he noticed Edward and Wilbur talking in the siding. Now, this wasn't unusual, because Edward, the blue engine, normally liked talking to his fellow workmates. But as James came in the yard, he noticed Wilbur giving Edward the brunt of his grief. Coo, look what I have in the yard today, said Wilbur, laughing. It looks like a pile of old iron arrived in our yard. I wonder who's going to take it to the scrap heap, laughed Wilbur rudely. Oh well, I'm sure they wouldn't mind if I took it. I am not scrap, said Edward indignantly. I am here helping you shunt in the yard, since your manager thinks you can't handle it alone, he said firmly. Besides, it's not like you could finish all this work on yourself anyway. Just because I'm tired doesn't mean I can't do it. But before Edward could finish, he saw James looking at him. Oh, hi James, what are you doing here? Well, I'm just here to drop off some more trucks before I add them to Henry's next good train. But it looks like you and Wilbur are having a conversation about scrap it up here, said James. Oh, don't mind him, said Edward. He's just, uh, well, jealous, I guess, he said. James looked at Edward's face. He noticed he was worn out and very tired looking. Shouldn't you take a rest at this point, said James. It looks like you can barely move an inch without collapsing. Edward looked at him and frowned. Oh, I'm sure I'm fine, said Edward. A little hard work wouldn't hurt anyone, now would it? Besides, Wilbur here can't finish this on his own. Sixteen's on his trial run and I don't want him to, well, mess anything up. So I'm sure he'll be fine. Huh, you do that, said Wilbur. See you later, old buyer. And Wilbur chucked away, laughing, while James gave him a blank expression. I don't know what the manager sees in him. I'm sure that sixteen fellow probably will replace him, <laughs> I suppose, said Edward, somewhat tired. Anyways, I have to deliver this train to the other end of the line. I'll see you later at the sheds. Edward chucked solemnly away, leaving James in his thoughts, worried for his friend. Now, as Edward made his way down the line, 